If you've ever wondered if his channel is also a low key nod to his youth, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because you're not alone. Hello, Dr. Green Thumb, paging Dr. Green Thumb. Hello, my name is Dr. Green Thumb. Hello. I'd like to tell you just where I'm from in the hills where the trees go wild with green fields. The fields with shields holding the blue steel. Greenhouse effect with the feet connect. DEA can't keep the green thumb in check. HPS, God bless the whole crop. Please, God, don't let me see no cop. Well, 76. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that too. Yeah, right. okay. And if you've never been in the comments section before, I highly recommend you jump down in there and explore how terrible my grammar can actually get. All right, so as you have seen in several videos, this is the Ditch Witch. It's my personal shotgun. It's a Winchester 97. It's been converted to a trench gun. This is an original Winchester, one you haven't actually seen in a video yet, but I've teased it a bunch in pictures and thumbnails of other videos. This, I actually helped a guy put it back together. Um, he calls it the house broom, so then I started calling it the Roomba. But actually, after doing testing on the functionality of this firearm, I'm going to encourage him to change the name to the Jackhammer. And you'll understand as this video unfolds. This was actually a hunting Remington Model 11. He had loaned to one of his buddies. His buddy was walking through the marsh or some place where there was mud. Accidentally put the tip of the barrel in the mud. Did not realize it. Seen game, went to go take a shot, because this actually came with a 30 inch barrel, it's currently sporting a 19 inch barrel, uh, probably about right here, the barrel was ballooned out, it had completely ripped off the magazine tube, the only thing that was left of the magazine tube was just a little nub sticking right here, it snapped it and tore it off, this thing was in a box and completely rusted tight. The bolt didn't move or anything, and I'm like, you know what, that's an excellent project gun, let me work on that. The stock was also split, you can kind of see where I glued it, all the way along here, just about completely in half. So I had to put the stock back together, get all the parts working, get a new magazine tube. Since I already had to chop down the barrel, chopped it down to 19 inches. Throw, threw on a magazine tube extender. In hindsight, I wish I would have went with a plate right here to attach the sling instead of on the end because it's just not aesthetically pleasing to me. I may talk him into trying to do that before I return the shotgun. And you have to cut down the original magazine tube just a little bit to get your 870 tube extender to fit on there. Because this had pretty bad recoil when I tested it, or not tested it when I originally made it, I had ported the barrel Unfortunately, I lost the iron sight during this testing. Or the bead sight, I should say. The original bead sight... Here's the one that fell off. I think it's 90% because I can't solder. I don't know why. It's a birth defect or something, but I absolutely cannot solder stuff together. The original one had a little stud that stuck out of here that it fit into. And then solder went on it and it held on that way. So I drilled a hole for the stud to go in. And then when I bought the replacement site, it doesn't have a stud. So I don't know if it's also maybe gas pressure pushing up out of the bore that popped off that site. But anyway, the purpose of this video is... Why did the military take so long to go to a semi-automatic shotgun? It wasn't until basically the Benelli M4 where they started using semi-auto shotguns. Or I should say, auto-fed shotguns. This was around just as long as this. In World War I, they could have picked either shotgun. Why did they go with pump action? Yeah, there was a couple of those floating around, but they never got popular. You'd see a couple of pop up, and then it was just pump action, pump action, pump action, pump action. So do they know something we don't know? And that's what I tried to explore with my testing. And oddly enough, I actually came to a pretty definitive answer. So, with your pump action, you're limited by how fast this can deploy. 
This Remington Model 11 actually uses the barrel. The barrel goes back into the receiver like this, all the way back, then the bolt locks back, and then the barrel goes forward. That's when your casing ejects, and the barrel goes all the way forward, it releases your bolt, your bolt goes forward, chambers a new round. This is not the Browning design. From what I was gathering, I mean, there probably is some sort of exception because shotguns were more of a stopgap. They were never really accepted as a combat weapon until way later when people are like, dude, come on, they're awesome. Why why do we not have an issued shotgun? That World War II kind of, it still wasn't exact yet. Like in World War II, they took a bunch of donation shotguns from the civilian market, converted those to trench guns. They were using them for different purposes, but they didn't actually technically, because they did produce some in World War I. They have your military cartouches and everything. Same with World War II. But the war was already going, so, like, you will even see, like, how this one has a hunting, what would you call that, hunting engravings on it. You would even see trench guns, military trench guns, with hunting engravings on it. And then Vietnam came. Same thing, it just, we didn't really have a solid shotgun. We were getting better now, we are getting Ithaca's, Stevens, stuff like that. They were all pump actions, except for a couple of Browning variants. But it wasn't until like later when we adopted like the 870 and the Mossberg 590A1. And then later on the Benelli that we actually fully accepted the shotgun as a combat weapon. But out of all that time, they've always had the option of semi-auto but it always seemed like pump action was the primary shotgun. And they even made these so they could take bayonets on it. Well, the first things first, let's go over the specs of both shotguns. This particular one does have a one inch shorter length of pull over the jackhammer. Now this jackhammer has the original stock, the model 97 or the ditch, which does not. The jackhammer has two extra rounds of capacity. Now, the military ones won't, but we're not talking about the military ones. We're talking about the jackhammer because we're just going to compare these two variants because there were so many variants anyway. I mean, you could literally fill in the blank with whatever you want. They have the same barrel length. The jackhammer is a couple of ounces lighter than the ditch witch. Both are outfitted with a sling. The jackhammer had a bead sight just like the ditch witch till just recently. So let's start exploring this. Why did the military not go with a semi-auto shotgun? Let's take a look at some testing footage. Two point four one. One point nine one. One point five three. Two point five three. One point three four. One point three one. One point zero three. One point two seven. As you'll notice in the footage, the recoil is absolutely horrible on the jackhammer. It kind of reminds me when I first started shooting shotgun. And I'm like, oh, you know, this recoil, it's handleable, but it's not that bad. And I think I was going through like a cheaper than dirt magazine. I found those little boots you can put on the stock. And I'm like, oh man, that'll like take away all the recoil. 
I put the boot on the stock and all of a sudden my shotgun has more recoil. I didn't understand it. Now I do. Basically those boots give a little bit of space so the shotgun can build up momentum. So instead of when the shotgun recoils, your body goes back and absorbs it. Because it has a little bit of space, the stock slams into you. Look at what the jackhammer did to me. That's horrible. The jackhammer, because the barrel, the bolt, and your spent casing all comes to the rear, hits the rear, and then goes forward, you have probably two pounds worth of mass that's just winding up and striking you right in the shoulder. This thing recoils bad. I mean, just look at these still shots. The ditch witch, I'm up like this. The jackhammer, I'm up like this. And even when you watch the footage, watch my back and watch my skin ripple and my back jerk back. And I believe that is the main reason they never went with a semi-auto shotgun. Because after we got past the Browning design, they tried making a prototype with the Remington Model 1100, which is a great idea. This will recoil far less than the Browning. But then they dropped the ball. They decided that their prototype was going to be full auto. <laughs> a 12 gauge full auto. There's only one 12 gauge I know of that you can handle full auto shooting. And that's the AA-12. But it's designed totally different. A normal shotgun on full auto, this would just not be controllable. You couldn't do it. There would be no point. You'd have one shot on target and the rest would just go wherever the hell you want. Not to mention... The shooter of that full auto shotgun is going to start to get gun shy because the recoil is so bad. So his ability to aim is just going to go away. He'll be afraid of the gun. So I believe that is the reason why we were all pump action. Because the leading competitor for semi-auto was the jackhammer. And the recoil is just too bad. You did not gain enough with going with a semi-auto because you could work this pump action faster and get shells on target. After taking comp after taking uh taking on that recoil, by the time you get back on target, it's neutralizing the effects of having a semi-auto shotgun. I was actually gonna do in my testing going prone with this shotgun, because obviously this would have advantages going prone. But after the first couple of shots, I was like, no. Because if I put this thing in my shoulder wrong, I get too close to my collarbone or something, this is gonna break my collarbone. This I wouldn't have a problem shooting prone. So let's look at some more testing, see what we can find. One point four two. One point zero six. One point one five. One point zero zero. One point seven one. One point one zero. One point one one. One point one three. So in that video, what we were doing was from the shoulder. Basically, I start at low ready. When the timer goes off, I engage my target. Now, the jackhammer does have the advantage here because it's got your safety. So from low ready, my finger's already on the safety. So as I'm coming up to my target, I can click it off and engage my target. The 97, 
From low ready, I have to start with my hand out of position. So the timer goes off, I have to cock the hammer, move my hand, and then go on target. I didn't do enough shooting to where you can really see a split, but if I were to just keep shooting and shooting and shooting, eventually the jackhammer would be faster at that particular drill. But because I have far more rounds down with the ditch witch, and I'm way more practiced with that shotgun, it was coming out pretty even. But eventually, yes, this would be faster. Not to mention, I was pretty gun shy because this was early in my testing and I just got a feel for the recoil. And man, that thing cleaned my clock. I was shook up after the first couple of rounds. I'm like, wow, this is terrible. But yes, eventually this will carry the advantage because of the safety location. So let's take a look at some more testing, see what else we can find. All right, the set took 5.37. Oh. oh, here we go. First shot was 2.01. Second was 1.19. Third was 1.14. Fourth was 1.03. All right, took 5.11. Uh, first shot was 1.88, second was 1.15, third was 0.99, fourth was 1.09. Now in that particular test, I started off, uh, I can't remember, I think it was a little ready, went to the first target and worked my way down. So you can actually see the effects of the recoil. Even though this is a pump action and it's slower to manipulate because it has less felt recoil, it was actually faster than the jackhammer. As you put more and more and more and more targets out there, you're going to start to really see that split. So let's take a look at some more testing, see what else we can find. Alright, you're looking at 8.92 for the whole thing. First shot was 7.10, second shot was 1.82. Total thing, 5.8. Four nine. First shot was four point five eight. Second shot was point nine one. Damn. Not sure if I got that last one, but it took me 13.59. First was 2.66. Second was 1.23. Third was 1.68. Fourth was 1.62. Fifth was 1.40. Sixth was 1.87. 7th was 1.50, 8th was 1.63. Alright, the whole thing was 15.8. First was 1.71, second one was 1.07, 
third was 1.01, fourth was 1.02, fifth was 1.36, sixth was 1.55, seventh was 3.42, eighth was 4.66. So in that video, what did we see? With the particular drills, because we did two different drills on two different videos, but anyway, the first set of drills, we took two cartridges, lined them up like this, and we did our speed load. Now the ditch witch was exponentially faster, and that's for a reason. One, there's no load gate. So all you gotta do is put your two shells in, go forward, and go through them. The jackhammer was slower for two reasons. One, the terrible recoil. Two, not only is there a load gate, this thing is locked. You have to push the button to release it. So I was holding it, I was trying to hold the button. So I'm fighting with the load gate. Get my two shells in. And then I can go to work. Had to come over the top to rack it. It wasn't natural, like, with the ditch witch, put my two shells in as I roll the shotgun, I can rack it and start going to work. The jackhammer, put my two shells in, roll it, come over, over the top. So due to the recoil and the load gate, the jackhammer was slower. Now the next drill, I just lined up eight targets because this has a higher capacity. So it makes sense to do a drill where it's gonna have an obvious advantage but that obvious advantage wasn't there. The ditch witch was in fact slower, but I had to do a reload in the middle of the drill, and then for some reason I thought this only held six shells, but it holds seven, so when I went to go to my seventh target, I had it open like, did I have it open? I think I had the chamber open, and I'm like, oh, there's another shell. So that stumble probably costed me a half second, second, and then we're talking about a reload, so if this had the capacity, without a doubt, it would have been faster than the jackhammer. Now let's take another look at a video. This video, I'm setting it up like it's a home defense situation. So you can't just use your right shoulder because say for example, your house is set up like this, your bedroom's right here, the hallway's right here. Well, you gotta come out with your left arm. Now I feel the best way to do this is you keep your shotgun like this on this particular shotgun would be my thumb on the hammer. So even if I peek out and there's someone right there, I can just cock the hammer and shoot it like this. And then, okay, there's not someone there. So now we're gonna go, shoot. Now, in this drill, I obviously go to the next side, just in case I come across another doorway and have to shoot. But for home defense, I feel with a shotgun, because you can do something like, how do they do that? like this, but I'm always afraid I'm gonna smash myself in the face with my shotgun. I mean, there's people that do it just fine without worrying about it. With a heat shield, you could do it on this one. But now with like the jackhammer, you can't do that one because the barrel moves. I don't know if your thumb is enough to stop it from moving, but if you have a good grip on here, this isn't gonna work at all because your barrel's gotta move. So with the jackhammer, again, this would be the best way to approach it. Come out and go like that. So let's take a look at that video and see what kind of information we can find. All right, the whole thing was six, five, three. All right, so the whole thing was five point Nine zero. Now, even though the Ditch Witch did run that drill faster, I do believe the jackhammer has the advantage. Because of the safety, you can click it off. There's nothing to pump. So, all right, with the Ditch Witch, you always pump like this, or I do because I'm right-handed, or vice versa if you're left-handed. So it takes you a second to think about what you wanna do with your hands. The only reason the Ditch Witch was faster is because at this point in the testing, I'm starting to get pretty gun shy of the recoil with the Remington. And I hadn't shot it left-handed yet, so I didn't know if it was gonna eject the casing in my face. Otherwise, if I were to keep practicing that, this would take the advantage if my shoulder don't fall off beforehand. This actually, 
busted up my knuckle pretty bad because the bolt comes to the rear and I'm not used to left-handed and I had my hand too high, slammed right into there, not cool. Plus then I had to transition pump before I went around. Now this next set of video, what we're gonna be doing is taking a look like, let's say you're a sentry. You have your two shotguns slinged, how quickly can you whip them out and engage your target? I mean, I don't know. If I thought there might actively be a threat, I'm not gonna sling it over me like that because these aren't single point capable. I think the best option is like this. You can hang on to your sling like that and grab your shotgun like that and keep it stable so it's not moving around. So I think this is the best way to dismount it. And then go into your target. All right, the whole thing was 10.7. All right, the whole thing was 9.13. Now the ditch witch was faster, I believe, for two different reasons. The jackhammer, because of where I unfortunately mounted the sling, my hand's too low. So I'm really having to reach it. I can just barely get it with my fingertips. So on my spin, it's a little bit more complicated. The next reason, the jackhammer, it uses the browning hump design. Let's see if I can get this up there. See how much lower the ditch witch is for your natural point of aim? When I pull up the ditch witch, it's right there. All I have to do is touch the stock to my face and I'm lined up with my bead. With the jackhammer, I touch the stock to my face and I'm too low. All I can see is a big hump right there. So I have to pick my head up. And that was slowing me down. Now at this point of the video, I actually lose my bead sight. So then I just start instinct shooting the jackhammer. I don't even worry about the bead. I just look at my target and shoot from there and you'll notice my time's getting faster. I even run another drill in the end, the same drill that I ran in the beginning, and it was running neck and neck with the ditch witch. They're similar in weight. This does have a slightly longer length of pull, but I wasn't really seeing that big of a difference. I'm actually probably gonna talk to the guy and see if I can just talk him into not having to solder this back on, because I mean, this is home defense shotgun anyway, and it spreads so ridiculously wide that it's pretty much useless for anything outside of home defense ranges. So let's take a look at some more videos and see what else we can discover. All right, so the whole thing took Sixteen point nine three. All right, the whole thing was ten point five seven. All 
All right, I got 6.71 for the total. One point three six. One point three six. One point five six. So after all that testing, what have we learned and ultimately what shotgun would I pick? Well, one thing we definitely learned, shooting the jackhammer is like trying to date a redhead. It's fun and exciting at first, but you're ready to get off the horse pretty quickly. Or you know what? Anyone named Jackie, we're going to also add to that. So this is like dating a redhead or a girl named Jackie. Ultimately, I do believe the Ditch Witch outperformed the Jackhammer, and I totally understand why we never really adopted semi-automatic shotguns for a very long time. It performed better, it's got a better natural point of aim, just touching the stock to my face, I'm lined up with the bead. Yeah, the hammer's inconvenient. You can go with a Winchester Model 12, I don't remember if they put a load gate on that one or not. If they didn't put a load gate, that would be an improvement over the Winchester Model 97. But going with the Remington Model 11, I don't recommend these. Not for any... I shouldn't say I don't recommend it. I do recommend these. They're beautiful shotguns. They're well-crafted. Oh, something else I noticed is... The Winchester 97 would hold its heat longer. I don't know if it's a different type of steel inside, maybe the color of the finish, maybe it's got thicker steel, but okay, so I'd run a drill with the 97. Then I'd run it with the Remington Model 11. I'd go back to the 97 and the 97 would still be very warm to the touch. So then I'd run a drill with the 97, go back to the Remington Model 11 and this would be cooled down like it was never shot. I'm not really sure what the deal was on that one. But ultimately, what would I pick? The Ditch Witch. I think it's just slightly more sexy. For me, at least, it's more practical. I just like the shotgun more. Obviously, I'm going to get both of them at some point anyway. But if I only had to choose one, it would be the Ditch Witch. If you'd like to check out any of my other videos, click on the cards. Uh, thank you for watching. If... If you'd like to help support the channel, there's links in my description. I can't put affiliate links directly into YouTube, so just click on the gun streamer link and go to one of those videos and click on an affiliate link because I've actually been getting hammered pretty hard with demonetization. About one in three videos get demonetized. Thank you for watching. Leave in the comments below which one you would pick and why.